I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and I'm here with my co-host, Craig Pasqua. And you're watching Native Voice TV. Yes, you are, and we have a great guest for you today. But what? I have to show you something really important before I introduce him, and I'm gonna stand up to do it. So, are you ready? Okay, everybody look, here I come. See my shirt? Ta-da! Can you see it? Can you see it? No, you have to stand down a little more. How's that? Here we go. Now yeah, can you there see we it? go. <laughs> see this beautiful shirt? Everybody see my shirt? I was so happy to see who designed this shirt, and that is our guest today, Jesse Hernandez. Welcome, Jesse. Thanks Thank for you. being in here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So yeah. tell us, right. what, what do we have in, on our set today? Well, uh, she has the Los but Tiburones. This San was so jersey. exciting. So. <laughs> you know, I was watching the game, yeah, yeah. as I always do. <laughs> Big Sharks fan here. <laughs> And all of a sudden, there's Jesse dropping the puck, the first puck, <laughs> and there's his shirts, and everybody has this wonderful shirt. It's beautiful. And I know it's really hard to get because they weren't even selling them. You had to be yeah. at the game. And everyone's selling them on eBay here and there, trying to, you know. For sure. Because <laughs> it was so <laughs> rare, but that's so exciting. Congratulations. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, it was, it was awesome to work with them. And, um, you know, getting a chance to work with a Bay Area team like the Sharks was you know, this is a trip for sure. And then they did a great job on everything too. Um, and then to have it given away to everybody at the game was just out of control. And the puck drop was like, I wasn't ready for that. But, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, all right. It's, uh, yeah, just, that just was... roll with it, you know, have some uh -huh. fun. Uh, I was trying to find where my where all my family was sitting at, and I'm like, what section was that? Ah, oh, there they are. <laughs> you know. How exciting. exciting, and the hat's beautiful, too. Oh, and right on. Yeah, they, they had these at a, another game, too. Um, I think they were limited to a, a thousand of these. Wow. Um, you can find yeah. these on eBay as well. I know, it's such a hot <laughs> commodity. It's so hard to find. And, and I, 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 I know I messaged you on uh, Facebook right away, but so was everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get a coach? I want the shirt, I want the hat, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was super excited to see that you had it already. I'm like, cool, all right. Rose came up. <laughs> yeah, I, I recently went to a game in Las Vegas, a Sharks game, and yeah. a lot of people had this shirt on there. Right they, on. Yeah, they were waiting in line to check it. I go, hey, look, other Shark fans, and they're wearing the same shirt I am. So, yeah, so proud of you. Well, hopefully we can do it again next year, and, you know, yeah. or re-release. I don't know something like uh, just to keep the design going. I think would be tight. I, yeah. So. Yeah, I wish they would sell them in a jacket or something else. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, uh, the sweaters or or blanket. Something. Yeah, That'd be good. it's really yeah, unique. Blanket would be cool for sure. Yeah, it's Ponchos. really unique. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you right design on. everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, all, all the stuff here is um, is my designs also. So I have a couple of uh, vinyl toys here that I produced over the years, and then um, some luchador masks as well. Um, yeah. So these are all like different designs. Uh, where should we start? I got the the McLan figure here. What does that mean? Which is uh, McLan actually means like the underworld in the the Aztec language, but um, in Nahua. Um, but uh, so I shortened it up so it's. Uh, Miklantekutli, the Aztec God of the Dead. Um, and so it's just like a uh, kind of updated version of him. And over here's the Calavera Azteca, which was done with um, Kid Robot. Um, oh, I love that one. <laughs> yeah, with all the feathers and stuff. And so it actually added on to their, their base figure with all the feathers and, you know, turned the ears into feathers too. Um, uh. And then uh, you have the, uh, the Mecca Azteca witty wordplay there but um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's I wanted to do like cool. the Aztec version of Guide King from the Shogun Warriors uh, from back in the day so that's uh, where so cool. this design was coming from and um, well all the figures I try to make it so that they look cool from like any direction you mm -hmm. see it mm -hmm. um, which is probably a little too much attention to detail because then people just put them facing forward anyway. But you know. Yeah, even on the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm looking at the back <laughs> of all of these toys and they are so unique. For sure. Well, they look like Optimus to me from the side. Oh, right on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these are really collector items. You wouldn't give yeah. this to a kid. I wouldn't give it to a kid. No. <laughs> wreck just, it. Don't play with it. <laughs> I let my son have one and leg broke off when I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, 
that was my bad when I gave it to you, bro. You know, like, just wanted you to have it. What'd you do with it? That's on you. I can't control yeah. that. <laughs> so I really wouldn't call it a toy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're more like uh, collectible yeah. art statues. Yeah, guess, you no know. kidding. Um, but yeah, so these are all vinyl. Nowadays, a lot of people are doing um, resin, um, which is even shorter runs. Um, but uh, so those you can do anywhere where these were all made in um, Hong Kong. So, mm, okay. um, and, then and you normally, design them uh, to the color, all the way down to the colors Oh yeah, and for everything. sure. So and it, it starts with uh, like a pencil sketch and then all the way through um, sculpting. And then I have different uh, colorways for each one as well. So um, say like uh, for this one example, there's, this is what's known as um, like the OG colorway, the original colorway, which is like a black, red, gold. Um, which is kind of my main color palette you'll find on kind of anything. Um, and then uh, this one actually fits that one, but it was the reverse, it was the peyote colorway. Um, so the original one of the Jaguar Knight comes in a, a yellow. Um, wow. So it was like the reverse of it. Um, and of course, I didn't bring anything else to show you here, but I have a, like the green colorway is the jungle, um, southern is blue, um, and shadow is uh, all black, silver, and white. Um, also known as the Raiders colorway, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, your, what was your inspiration or what inspired you to make this going? So the, the vinyl stuff, um, I started collecting them probably like uh, 2003, 2004-ish, something like that, and then started doing custom ones. And then from there, you know, repainting other people's stuff and then it led to doing, you know, full runs of your own original figures. Um, and really there was no one else doing a style like this at all. And so it was just kind of kept happening from there um, with this uh, kind of like urban Aztec style that I'm known for now, which is kind of like, you know, blending the ancient cultures with uh, graffiti and kind of cartoonish styles. Um, and you can find it in like the, the murals and, and things like that I paint as well. Um, Where have you done murals? Uh, let's see, so I have quite a few in Oakland right now. Um, and then in San Francisco, I had about five or six running. Oh, um, really? There's some in, uh, I just painted one in Richmond recently. And um, I painted in uh, Mexico City and uh, Amsterdam also. Oh. Really? Yeah. So oh, uh, who hires you, the, the city, that the particular city that you're painting in or individuals for their businesses? Or yeah, normally it's more of a, a private commission. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so like a, a business will hit me up to be like, hey, you know, you want to come paint something on this wall, you know, just kind of whatever you're feeling or, you know, just something in your style. Um, I've also painted at uh, music festivals like uh, Outside Lands in San Francisco, uh -huh. um, things like that, where you have to show up and then day of knock it out because you know, you're like there to entertain people, basically. Uh -huh. um, I actually did a, a couple other ones recently for, um, I painted at the, the Latin Grammys in Las Vegas. You did? Yeah, wow. it was a trip. Um, it was for the... Uh, what was it uh, the main sponsor was a uh, Buchanan's whiskey, so they were the ones that actually hired me to paint at their like Grammy party, and um, so we, I did a a live piece there that was um, kind of like the, the the Scottish line, and I did like a, an Aztec line going the other direction, a little fusion of the two, um, mm. and then uh, also painted for like um, in San Diego Comic Con, uh, Warner Brothers hired me and a couple other people to do um, different pieces, and I did a painting for that. Um, the TV show Blind Spot. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Um, yeah. It's like a mystery show. The girl pops up with all these tattoos and they're trying to figure out what happened to her and all this stuff. But so I ended up meeting like all the cast of the show and oh, everything. Wow. That was a trip. Um, and met uh, Bill Paxton there too. RIP, miss you, brother. Yeah. Um, he was super yeah, cool. I really liked him. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he just passed away this year, which yeah, is terrible, but yeah. um, super Crazy. cool cat. Totally flipping this interview in other directions, but no, that's it. it's really fascinating the different places you've been and, and the different things you've done. It's amazing, and you did you, For sure. your shirt too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is like my beautiful. main logo here. Okay. You see. I know, and you, and you met, oh, okay, yeah. and you mentioned your um, your color palette, and that's yeah, crazy yeah. Guy yet. Um, so yeah, this one. Uh, has a pretty crazy blend going on too to keep it uh, day glowing. <laughs> so when, you, you were asking what inspired you to do these, but when did you actually start your art? Was it a, as a kid or what? You know? Yeah, I mean, I think I've been drawing um, pretty much my whole life. And then uh, I think around 98 is when I started 
doing art all the time. And then any other work I've done since then has all been art related. Um, and then um, I've been freelance the last four years, so just doing my stuff um, exclusively. Uh, whereas before that, I was doing uh, cartoons and television. And then I also worked at uh, Zynga for a while in San Francisco doing uh, the Facebook games and stuff like that. And then, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. You get all over the place, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, what about the, these uh, masks? Oh, masks yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I think that started, well, actually, I did a luchador mask in 2012 when I went to Mexico City um, for an art show there. And I asked them, I said, hey, can you guys make luchador masks? They're like, yeah, we can make that happen. And so actually, I don't have that one here, but I made a version of the Red Demon, which was a toy that I designed, and turned that into a mask that was really? super wow. sick. And then um, after that, I got hit up by uh, Mask Republic to do a, um, a design for this art show. And it was of this guy here, uh, Dr. Wagner Jr. And so I knocked out um, a poster and a shirt design for them. And then the wrestler saw him was like, wait, what? You know, and, and he made a mask of it like right away and started rocking it in the ring. And um, so that was a trip just like right from there. Um, the design is actually getting bootlegged all over Mexico, which is really? like, oh. <laughs> kind of like, <laughs> it's cool and terrible at the same time. But, yeah. you know, I guess if you're getting bootlegged that hard, that means you did something super cool, right? Um, but yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, but then other wrestlers saw this design and were like, hey, dude, can you, like design some gear for me. And then, um, so that I ended up doing uh, a design for Juventud Guerrero, um, the juice from back in the day, and um, Guerrero Maya, who wrestles in Mexico also. Um, and then uh, Lince Dorado, who's a friend of mine that wrestles in the uh, WWE now. And so when he got signed on to do the, the cruiserweight division, they uh, opened up this new show last year, I think it was. I mean, it was two years ago now. Um, but so when he was going to go pro, he hit me up to design all his gear. And so designed uh, the mask, you know, cape and leggings, everything. It was a trip. Wow. Um, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, super fun. And it's a, a trippy medium to work with, too. Um, and I think that was the thing, too. There's not a lot of um, voices in that field. So then the stuff I started doing, people were tripping out, like, wait, wait, who did this stuff, you know? And so they kind of recognized my style. Uh -huh. um, and actually, a friend of mine saw that dude wrestling uh, with, with that mask, let's say Dorado, and was like, hey, dude, I hope you designed this, because if not, they stole hair. your style, you know? <laughs> so is that any of the wrestler's personality, or is that all you? Uh, well, it's or both. It's so I try to, um, depending who it is, um, like if they've had a popular mask before, I'll try to flip it in another direction, but then keep some essence of the original mask. Uh, so like with his, I was just, it looks very different than his original mask, but there are some small pieces. Um, and then also the, um, he did kind of have that same color scheme going um, with the, the red and, or red, did he have red? He had black and gold for sure. I think he had a little bit of red. Um, which I'm like, bro, you're playing into my color scheme perfectly. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. really something. Down to the Mohawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrestles on WWE, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my son used to really be into that. <laughs> so I knew sure. all the wrestlers, I kind of lost track of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a trip. All of a sudden, I'm like, where was this 20 years ago when I could have been a wrestler? But, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but then we wouldn't get this. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the Death Serpent there. Uh, I made that with a uh, Kuso vinyl. And um, so that one was, uh, there's actually a lot of different colors of that one. That's the gold version, um, which was kind of like the chase figure. So there was like one out of every 10 or 12 was the gold one. Hmm. Um, really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. So they were more and, rare than the other. And see color. in the back here, you were talking about how every angle, there's so much detail, even For on sure. the back of your toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of a perfectionist, so it can't wow, let it yeah. out till things are on point, you know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, uh, you know, try to make something that, you know, you would see, you know, 20 years from now and still be like, man, that thing's sick, you know? I wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't pulling any punches, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, Wow, I don't I think know. you have anything to worry about there. <laughs> right Boy, on, this man. Is <laughs> well, it's really something, worrying. though, too, that your name is just traveling in all circles, huh? I mean, to, yeah, yeah. To, for the Sharks people to hear about you. And yeah, for, yeah that did. was a trip. <laughs> um, yeah, like I was saying earlier, how, like, yeah, they just sent me an, an email kind of out of nowhere. 
um, hey, would you like to work with the San Jose Sharks? Said, yeah, for sure, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. let's get it going. And um, yeah, they called me up right after, and uh, yeah, we were on it within the next couple of days, started working on the project. And, yeah. and I've seen so many of their shirts and jerseys and everything, I have the jerseys, but this one really was so unique, you know, it was different, and, and I just love the colors in it. Yeah. You know, it's really something. I was thankful they didn't make me have to cut it down to like three colors or something mm -hmm. like that. So, because yeah, even yeah. like the, the turquoise blues, there's like two or three different ones and a couple grays in there also. And um, yeah, yeah. there's a lot of times with um, like shirt design or things like that, you'll have to limit all of your stuff when they're, yeah, especially when they're doing silk yeah. screen like that for the jersey, because yeah. each color adds cost right, to it. Right. You know? So, mm -hmm. um, and I was like, all right, cool. You let me do all of them. Done. You know? Yeah, I was, you know, I was really impressed with it. And then I've seen so many people wearing them. So yeah, I yeah. guess you know, and I, I, as I say, I have the other ones, but they don't wear them that much. But this one, yeah, yeah. for really. No, it's a good sign that uh, even at the game that night they were saying, yeah, just look at the crowd. Half the people are wearing that. They say, oh, whatever oh, yeah. I was wearing before, we're done Together with it. You know, let's rock yeah, these. Exactly. Um, so yeah, and then we went back a couple of nights later, and people were wearing them again. So I was like, oh man, this is awesome. And, yeah. Uh, well, I hope they, uh, well, you or they market them into yeah, a yeah. jacket or a sweater or a blanket well, it, or whatever. Well, yeah. it brings in a whole new set of audience. You know, For it's sure. something that someone can identify with. Maybe they can't identify with the traditional logo. Or yeah. Whatever. And you bring in yeah. something like this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That speaks to me. I want that. For sure. Yeah. yeah and maybe, yeah. you know, other teams should do. It. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Trying yeah. to get in with some of the other Bay Area teams around uh -huh. here too. Um, Talking with a, a friend of mine is is um, helping run the Native Heritage Night for the A's, and so we're trying to talk him into a jersey over there Ooh, too. Oh, that'd be nice. Okay. Trying to get in with the Giants also. Um, yeah, that would be nicer. Raiders, <laughs> Niners, Warriors. I'm, I'm open. Yeah. You know? Well, Warriors <laughs> make sense. Let's do the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I almost I almost did a hat for the Warriors last really? year. Really? Um, and then it just fell through at the last minute, but it almost happened. So oh, well, we'll see well, what I'm goes from there. I'm hoping for the other <laughs> Niners or yeah. Warriors. That'd be cool. Mm, for sure. It's very unique, very unique. So what are, are you, and you did cartoons, you were saying. I yeah. kind of skimmed over that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, a, a long time ago, I did a, a cartoon called The Nut Shack for the, Filip, uh, the Filipino channel. It was um, mixed TV. And so it was a, a comedy. It was out of control back in the day. It actually I, resurfaced again. I remember again. watching that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it popped up again as a meme later. Really? Which was kind of wow. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, I think it started because like, just some, some random kid was like, man, I hate this show. And, <laughs> and he got everyone else to look at it. And then the, uh, the intro animation kind of got out of control when everyone started bringing it back. And, you know, <laughs> but it's, you know, like I said, half the people were hating it, half the people liked it. But, you know, that as long as people were looking, one. I didn't that care. Cute. I thought it was yeah. hilarious. Um, but yeah, so no, that show was a ton of fun to work on, and um, they used to do voiceovers for that also, and hmm. a lot of other stuff, and then yeah, all the original characters. Um, yeah, cartoons are super fun to work on, um, getting to just try to make people laugh all the time, and you know, yeah. uh, remember they used to hate us on that show because uh, everyone else was working on the news. And so they're all, you know, had to be straight laced, super uh -huh. proper, and we'd be over here just trying to make each other laugh all day, you know. Oh, fun. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just so excited to have you here, and I, they're telling me we're out of time. I know. No. Can you believe it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations on all your success, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on all this, with all the sports teams and everywhere else and on TV and cartoons and movies and yeah. all so of the above. Next, yeah, yeah. For Good sure. Luck no, to thank you. you guys. You're just doing fantastic work. Yeah, awesome to be back here with you. It's been a while. It has <laughs> yeah. been. It has <laughs> been. The toys got bigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, congratulations, and we'll have you back again and see what you're up to. Sounds Thanks good. Thanks for being here. All right, thank you guys. Come back. Thank you for joining us. Like us on Facebook, and we'll see you again next week. My name is Rose Amador LeBeau. I am president and CEO of CTC. Our mission is to help people through employment and education become self-sufficient. We have a day worker center. We have educational programs so people can get their GEDs. We serve a variety of people, people who've just become unemployed, people who have never worked, 
We work with homeless people. We work with people who have just gotten out of prison and have to re-enter the workforce. So we're full service. I think it's seeing people make the change, become successful, uh, make that transition, and actually having an impact on people's lives, a positive impact. To see these success stories is what it's all about. I'm Craig Pasqua, co-host of Native Voice TV, and I am with Iris Valdez from Connexion. Yes, hello, Craig. Oh, welcome, Iris. Thank and you you're going to tell me a little bit about um, your programs that you're running at Connexion. That's right. And by the way, Connexion is the sponsor of Native Voice TV, <laughs> and you work with Connexion. Yes. And so you're you're starting some programs. That's right. Yes. Thank you very much, Craig, and I appreciate you having me here today um, to speak a little bit about what um, we do over at Connection to Community. Um, one of the programs that uh, we offer and that I am a part of is uh, the RESET Project. RESET is an acronym for Reentry Success Education Training. Um, I'm the Employment Specialist, and what we do there is we assist uh, we assist 18 to 24 year old uh, youth who are currently or have previously been um, involved in the justice system or incarcerated. Um, we like to help them um, find certifications, uh, build up their resume, go through interview skills um, in order to be successful in getting back into the workforce. So are these kids, are these uh, youth, young adults, are they referrals or do they come in on their own? Um, so it's just one of our programs. So if they do come in on their own, we do have other programs that we can refer them to. Um, but we do normally get referrals from uh, probation officers as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so, they are, if someone that out there wants to be involved with the program, they can come on in. They correctly. definitely can, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. well good. That's the RESET program. That's the RESET program. Um, currently we're in partnership with the top program, um, that's the trade orientation program, um, and they do certification of uh, OSHA 10. Um, we do as well. We do, a, Reset does a certification of OSHA 10, Serve Safe, and Customer Service. Um, the top program specifies specifically in uh, trades for uh, building and construction, and uh, they're offering a class on December 14th at 6 p.m. over at Connection to Community. Um, it's just an orientation right now um, in order to go forward into their sessions. And besides the job training you use, or it's, I guess, trade skill um, building you offer them, are there, is there any other resources you offer? Um, as far as the RESET project? Yes. Yes, yes, so we offer uh, OSHA 10. We also offer certification in uh, customer service and serve safe. Uh, so anybody can go into uh, retail or the um, um, into the hospitality industry Hospital. as well, um, and we offer uh, coaching as well, jo coaching job readiness coaching. Okay, are there any charges for these programs? Uh, currently, there are no charges for okay. this program, so it's completely free. And if you want more information, you can contact us um, at Connection to Community. Our program coordinator is named Araceli Pinedo. Um, you can contact her at 408-213-0961. Her extension is 35, and she'll be more than happy to help you with anything. If you have any questions or just to set you up with uh, the first step. Okay, and typically, how long do these programs last? Um, so it depends. It depends on which one you choose. Our customer service is very intense. Um, I believe it's a two or two and a half week program. Um, our serve safe, I believe, is fairly simple. It could take you a day or a day or two days to complete that. Um, and OSHA 10, um, in partnership with uh, the trades orientation program, um, that will take uh, maybe a month. Um, I know it is several several weeks that you have to complete in order to get into trades. So once you graduate through the program, do you get a certificate or? Yes. What, okay. Yes, so you will get a certificate in your OSHA 10, in your Serve Safe, as well as the customer service. So that's just something that you can add into your resume. And then that's where I come in. I will go ahead and help you build your resume, get interview skills, uh, presentation skills, and then hopefully line you up with the employer that you'd like to land a job with. Okay, great. Yeah. Have you had a lot of success with this? So this is a new program. It's a pilot yeah. program. Um, we're all just getting ready and started. We do have a couple of clients who um, have come in and we're ready to hit the floor running. Um, so it's, so far it's been good. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, wonderful. And what else? I know you teach at Conexion. I do, I do. I also teach English to adults. I'm the ESL instructor. Um, we do classes every Monday and Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Um, it is a multi-level class. Anybody is able to join at any point in time. Those services are also free. Um, and uh, it's a real good uh, environment, I feel. I feel like everybody is uh, well connected and it's the place where we want to make mistakes so that when we step out into the real world, we're, we learn from those mistakes and are able to just uh, communicate effectively. And again, are those programs free? Yes, they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. So there's a whole array of services at Conexion, oh, yes. what I understand. Yes. And oh, right now we're talking with Iris Valdez, and she's a teacher, and she's also with the Reset and the TOPS, uh, working with the TOPS program at Conexion. And we will post the linkages to the programs yes. at the end of this. Awesome. And uh, we appreciate you being here, and thank you for telling us. And, we provide a wonderful service for our community, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Native Voices TV. Um, can't wait to work with uh, anyone who's watching and wants to come and uh, take that second step forward. Well, thank you, and thank you for Conexion to Community for supplying these programs and sponsoring these programs, as well as sponsoring Native Voice TV. Thank you for watching.